Imagine you're 300 feet underwater, the exact point at which the water outside turns real dark. No rays of the sun can reach you now. Cruising at a speed of 25 nautical miles, you're already a thousand miles off the nearest shore, and you're somewhere in the middle of the vast Pacific Ocean. Outside, the crushing pressure of water is just enough to push into any space filled with air, including your lungs. Welcome to a typical day in the life of a U.S. submariner, where you swim with the sharks as you sneak your way around mines laid by enemies or other detecting subs, ships, and satellites. This unique and hostile environment makes submarines one of the most dangerous ways to travel and the strangest place to work. Giant killing machines, subs are certainly dangerous for people on land. They can fire torpedoes, launch missiles, lay mines, and carry out secret intelligence missions. But what about the dangers of just being inside such a vessel? Whether it's a relatively shallow marine tour on Atlantic 14, the biggest recreational sub operating in Hawaii, or a nuclear military warship like the U.S. Seawolf traveling under polar ice, capable of destroying the world using 475 kiloton nuclear warheads. It really doesn't matter. Once you climb through that narrow hatch and down the ladder, you have to face the perils of the deep sea. Confined living, a limited supply of oxygen, and the risk of drowning or being killed in an electric fire, a nuclear explosion, or even worse, an inward implosion of the body. Remember, even a small fire or gas leak in a sub can cause the vessel to break down. And unlike a plane, where you can jump off and hope to land safely in a parachute, when it comes to subs, you have nowhere to go. With crushing water pressure outside, there's also the risk of a catastrophic implosion. This is exactly what happened to the Titan when the research sub collapsed in on itself in what was probably just a few nanoseconds, causing all five on board to die so fast they probably had no time to think that something was up, leaving behind only parts of their former bodies. To learn more about what happened to the pressure hull of the Titan, watch our full video on the link below. You see, in a tragedy like that, it's not possible to save the lives or the wreck left behind. Remember, the deepest part of the Atlantic Ocean is more than 8,000 meters below sea level, while the crushing depth of an average sub could go as low as 400 meters. In this video, we explore the great dangers to human life that lie beneath the waves. I mean, how often are these things inspected? And what's the max depth you can dive? And how long can a sub stay underwater? Before we go deeper into the world of these fascinating boats, let's give you a memo on how subs navigate in the first place. Unlike a road where you can simply use your eyes, submariners cannot rely on normal vision to get them through the deep. Imagine hitting an iceberg or an old submerged mountain or going hull to hull with an enemy. Visibility underwater is not exactly great and with such little sunlight, sound waves are the only way to map your surroundings. Thankfully, modern subs are installed with an advanced sonar suite that allows them to use active and passive sonar and sneak around unnoticed. By recording all sorts of data about the pitch, frequency, and direction of these waves, subs detect whales or sharks. During wartime, an active sonar system also emits pulses of sounds, listening for echoes produced by hostile subs. Now, you probably thought these boats have sonar running all the time, right? After all, they're pretty much running blind. But that's just not true. Sound waves can be dangerous, especially for wildlife, but also for divers who find themselves close enough to a sub while snorkeling in the Atlantic. And because sound travels in waves, the shock from the energy burst could be fatal. Let me explain. If you have ever been to a big concert, you must have literally felt the bass coming from the stage. And while most concerts max out at around 100 to 120 decibels, just enough to damage your ear, sound pulse from a sub may be up to 300 decibels, enough pressure to rupture your internals in a second. But here's the catch-22 of sonar technology when you're a sub trying to hide from enemy vessels, you can't keep your active sonar on at all times. That's because sonars emit ping sounds, shown in probably every submarine film ever made. Trust me, there are quite a few out there. Now, if the pings bounce back, it means there's something in your way. But if that something is an enemy warship, it also means you have given away your location. This is exactly why subs are not fitted with an automatic collision warning device, because such a system would require keeping a sonar on at all times. And when it comes to subs, silence is key. But enough about sound. What about the air pressure inside the sub? 
We know for every 10 meters you go down into the ocean, the pressure of the water goes up by one unit. Thankfully, inside the sub, you're at normal air pressure, or fairly close to it, so that's good news. That said, subs do operate in a very loud environment. The engines hum, the rushing water, the ringing of bells, it's probably the worst place to take a nap. In fact, did you know sailors sometimes hug the cruise missiles on board to stay cool when they sleep? Probably not the cuddliest object out there, but anyway. Living in close quarters for months on end with no sunlight or fresh air can lead to major mental and physical stress to those on board. Sailors also experience a range of symptoms like headaches, lack of sleep, loss of appetite, and a failing mental health. Some report coffin dreams, the kind when the sleeper is heard shouting that the control room is flooding or he's being chased by an MK-48 torpedo. And speaking of crazy nightmares, being employed to work in a sub is not like working a regular job. Every crew member must know everything about the boat. Let's say the function of each of the thousands of valves. So yeah, the pressure for academic and technical expertise is bad on its own. Working 12 hours a day, submariners are among the most highly trained of all naval professionals. But despite all the training they get, the risk of an accident always looms large. Human error is the biggest cause of accidents at sea. Let me explain how. Let's see the worst case scenario. An all-out war between two nuclear powers. Let's say, hypothetically, it's Pakistan and India. Two nuclear-armed countries who own a good number of intercontinental ballistic missiles or ICBMs. As the chief of the boat, you are the person in charge of deciding whether or not to press the red button. Your civilian leadership back home has been killed and all main intelligence offices have been raised to the ground. Plus, you're afraid if you try to connect with command centers on land, you will send radio signals and give away your biggest secret, your exact GPS location. According to Australian strategist Desmond Ball, the sea is actually the only area where nuclear weapon platforms come into physical contact. And it's not just that. Nuclear subs also come with other risks. Risk of losing the liquid coolant, probably the most common cause of accidents in subs. You could also damage the reactor's protection system. And in the case of nuclear subs, refueling is also super tricky. Not surprisingly, people working in subs are exposed to ionizing radiation. As of now, 40 nuclear explosions have claimed a whopping 650 lives, with 400 of these tragic accidents suffered by Russian subs. As for diesel-powered subs, they just don't have the luxury of an unlimited source of fuel in the form of uranium, which means they need air to work, so the sub has to surface or at least come up to its periscopic depth. Exposing the dustbin-sized snort mast above the surface, which can be easily spotted by a radar or even seen by the naked eye. For as long it recharges, which could be hours, the diesel sub's acoustic, visual, and radar signatures are high. This vulnerability is exactly what drove the world's richest navies to develop and build nuclear subs. But hold on, what happens if the sub full of nukes explodes? Luckily, it's not possible for nuclear weapons to be accidentally launched. But if the hull implodes, the weapon can be severely damaged or lost, leaking radioactive waste into the oceans. Lucky for us, water is a great absorber of radiation. Every year, a submarine's hull, safety systems, life support equipment, and all mechanical, fluid, and electrical systems are rigorously checked by experts. For our next video, we look at the biggest accidents and tragic disasters experienced by nuclear subs in the past 50 years. To learn more about your favorite underwater warships, make sure you give our channel a thumbs up so we can churn out more cool submarine content for you in the future. And since you're here, don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss out.